All right, shalom, Akim, shalom. Hey, y'all, Bashamal Shai, Baka Thumb. To my dear brothers out there, you little man of sisters, worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. Our praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Harakak, Wadash, and the bonds to the elder apostles of the Great Millstone. All right, welcome back to another current events prophecy and madness. And um, today's date is uh, June 23rd, 2023. You notice that 23 and that 23. Which I can't, it made me think about the two thirds and how the Heavenly Father is going to destroy two thirds of our people, man. But, um, and I didn't even, I didn't even come up with a subtitle yet. I, I'll do that, uh, when I upload the video. But nonetheless, man, let's jump straight into this thing. This is going to be focusing more on the madness and, 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 and uh, a little bit of history. But, uh, let's see what we got queued here first. You guys are. So I just want to take a quick second to look at some of the most popular female rap music right now. Degrading and over-sexualizing black women, toting guns, promoting gun violence, promoting drugs, smoking and drinking, and acting ignorant and foolish. If this isn't anti-black, <laughs> then nothing else is. Not only is this anti-black, this in particular is an attack on black women. And when you know that a nation can rise no higher than its women, then this is not only an attack on black women, it's an attack on black men and subsequently all black people. Now, um, you know, she starts to talk about a bunch of... And it's a far kind of she starts to t go into her own understanding because first off, no, the, the nation can't, higher than it, can't rise higher than its men. Okay, the, the the men is the backbone of the nation, and it's not a, it's not an attack on black culture. I mean, black people, it's black culture. We're not black. You know, that is black culture. It's not an attack on black people. That's black culture. All right. So as you can see, she started off by saying the most popular music amongst. Um, uh, the black woman or the, the southern kingdom woman. And you've seen his ridiculousness. It's whoredom. It's nasty. It's a curse. Matter of fact, the little caption says, They use our celebrities to keep us in low condition. A nation cannot rise no higher. No, that's her. That's what she said. But, you know, the first part is right. You know, they use that, the music to, to destroy our people. And yes, you women, you're a part of that. You know, really, you're like the face. You're the face of it, all right? Because you're the weaker vessel. So you're easily susceptible to temptations and doing wickedness. But nonetheless, man, it made me think of Isaiah, the third chapter, because this is ridiculous, man. It, it, it's just like, fuck, you can't even, we can't even have our woman right now. You women think that it's hard on you, but man, come on, we can't even have y'all because of this. That that's some crazy stuff because remember the scriptures tell you that the 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 glory of a, a glory of a man is the woman. The woman is our glory. But look at our glory, it's tainted. Now this remind me of Isaiah 6 and 3 and 16. It says, "Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, the daughters of Zion are you is you Israelite women, Negro Latino and Native American Israelite women." It says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and menacing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord should discover their secret parts. So that's the reason why uh, the southern kingdom woman here doesn't grow. Because the Lord plagued your scalp. And then it said he was... Discover your secret parts. That's the reason why um, you wear them scant, them little scanty clothes. You know, your your breast all out, your your butt hanging out, your hair out. 
It says in the day the Lord would it says in that day the Lord would take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their coats and their in their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tab tablets and the earrings, the rings, the nose rings, the changeable suits of apparel, the mantles and the, the wimples and the crispy pins, the glasses, the fine linen, the hoods and the veils. And it should come to pass that instead of sweet, there should be a stink and instead of a girdle, a rent and instead of a well set of hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girdle of sackcloth and a burning and burning instead of beauty. So our woman is under a curse right now. You just heard that long list that I read. The Lord basically was going to snatch away all the things that make you look pretty. And he was going to have you be like this, like you see earlier in this video with our woman, all different type of color hair. Breast all out, titties all out, and that's the reason why your 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 kuba, which is the Hebrew word for for vagina, that's the reason why your vagina stinks because it's a curse on you. Your vagina is not supposed to smell the way that it smell. You know, you women that be running to Wal Walgreens and CVS, and you be getting them dush, and you get that vagus seal. It's because you're having sex with multiple men. And the pH balancing your vagina is off because their sperms and men's men's uh, cells running all through your box. It ain't supposed to be like that. But let's go on to the next thing here. Speaking about gangs, it sounds like we're speaking about organizations because that's the way it's presented. We're right. talking about kids shit. Yeah. When we saying gangs, you talking about you asking your kid why they ate all the cereal and didn't think about nobody else. A kid mentality is to do whatever what they feel like doing. So these games, they, these are started by kids, bro. Right, right. There's always an old nigga there. It's right always, there. yes. Like kind, old, of, kind of telling these young niggas what it is. An old OG Percy ass nigga. Always trying to tell you some bullshit because they life ain't turned out right and they holding up. Listen, man, this is what I'm trying to tell you. It was a, it was a uh, toy store called Toys R Us Kids. They had the greatest motherfucking commercial in the world. They motherfuckers say, I don't want to grow up, because if I did, I couldn't be a Toys R Us kid. These niggas is crip Toys R Us kids. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, these niggas are crip Toys R Us. Grow the fuck up. He's speaking about gangs. It sounds like we're speaking about them. Man, and this guy is not lying. It says most adults and gangs are kids who don't want to grow up. And he's not lying because over here on the West Coast, I happen to, this is where the Lord stationed me and all the brethren on the West Coast. And we, we grew up in the midst of that. We know all about that. You know? All that gang stuff and how really it's a bunch of little kids. You know? I remember seeing my cousins, they used to have fun doing, you know, gang activities. Fighting all at the fair, running from people at the fair, hitting each other with shovels. Now that's when I was a kid. Then as I started growing up and seeing it, it started to get even worse. Instead of just fighting and getting down in the street, they started to shoot at each other and kill each other. And, you know, it just started getting worse and worse. And that's why majority of them, where they end up at in the penitentiary. Because they, like you said, they never grow up out of that. And there's there's dudes they call triple OGs and, you know, quadruple OGs. And they still be on them corners in, in L.A. They still be on them corners. The OG. And they reverencing this dude. It's just, it's just like, like you said, it's a bunch of kiddish stuff. It's Isaiah 3 and 12. It says, as for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. So we're being led by a bunch of freaking children. Now, Esau, and when you read this scripture, Esau is that, that child because he is a child. And Esau is the one that 
manipulated our people into doing this game banging stuff, making it cool by using music. But also our people, you act like children too, and you oppress each other. You let the woman rule over you, and you follow up on all the celebrities that don't give a damn about you. All they care about is money. At, at the expense of your life being destroyed. Let's go to the next thing we have here. Hold on, hold on. You act like I was about to punch. You scary than a motherfucker. You shouldn't even be in this job. You, you've been elevated the whole time. The whole reason why, because it's your ego. Your ego got me on the ground. You f***ed up. You shouldn't even be in this job. You f***ed up. You gonna kill somebody. Naperville got enough going on with the race rape relations. And you up here... Excitement? You knew I was an officer. You knew I was an officer. You knew I was an officer. Get to the ego trip for you. Hold on, hold on. You act like I was about to punch. You scary than a motherfucker. You shouldn't even be in this job. Yeah. You see, Jake, come to find out he's an officer, and for whatever reason, another an Edomite officer got him all on the floor with Esau surrounding him, handcuffs. Making him look like a bad guy. And the whole time he's an officer. And like the Jake is, he's, you know, Jake got that, that, that tension in his voice because he know that Jake know he was correct and that other officer was off. You know, it's the officer ain't really saying nothing because he nothing but a damn racist ass Edomite. That's it. You a devil. And you Edomites, you self claim white people, you don't like us. But you try to front like you do. You don't like us. And we know that. And that's the reason why they got this guy on the ground for whatever reason. It says off-duty cop gets brutally honest with an on-duty cop. You know? So that was a hatred move right here. This is Ezekiel 35 and 5. It says because that has had a hatred, a perpetual hatred, you said for playing white people, this is talking about you. It says because that has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel... You've, you've killed the Negro, Latino, Native Americans by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and in the time of their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord power, I will prepare thee unto blood and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou has not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. So now it's you Edomites turn. The tables are turning. The world see you Edomites ain't nothing but a bunch of white privilege, uh, selfish, racist thieving group of people nation and people the world is seeing you know so yeah man that jake that jake learned you know jake learned in the hard way <laughs> let's play this next thing we have here that's it they want me dead they don't want to show that i can sell tickets they don't I mean, want to show. A big fight for, I don't understand uh, who's uh, running it, but they don't want to show that I can sell tickets. They don't want to show that I, I can actually, I am the face of boxing. They don't want to show any of that because I didn't sell my soul. Sorry, I'm not sorry. I, I believe in God a lot. I know how to sell myself, but it doesn't mean I gotta sell thyself. It doesn't mean I gotta take dick up the anal and put on go on my. No, I'm not doing none of that. I'm not gonna do that slapping my ass and shit. No, I'm not doing that stuff because it's not what it is. I didn't come here to be famous. I came here to be a legend, and and that, if I could leave it off at 25 like that, then I'm gonna do it. You know, like I said. Yeah. If you don't know who this is, this is uh. This is Tia Lopez. He's he's a, a professional boxer, and he recently recently just had a fight, you know. And this is he's 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 claimed he's finna retire, you know. Now, all what he said, you know, what I'm saying um, the point that stuck out to me was that he said he's not finna sell his soul to to get all his fame and to get all these, you know, get famous. You know, so when I heard this, it made me think about you can't exclude no entertainment world that Esau is in control of. All of these guys from the basketball world to the boxing world to the um, football world and so forth on. They all the famous ones, the ones that's out there and they they got that fame and all that. A lot of these guys sold they fucking soul. You're not getting nowhere and no entertainment 
faction without selling your soul. And this T.O., his, his comment just solidified that when I heard it. I'm like, yeah, they, them niggas out there, them niggas up there selling their soul to be famous in that boxing world too. You know, these niggas are not exempt. Now he called on, uh, he believe in God Allah. Now that ain't the real God. Yahweh Ba Shem Yahushai is the real God. But what he said, what he said was that he don't have to sell his soul. And that's good. Don't do that. All right? Don't do that. Matter of fact, when you, when you know what, before we go to the scripture, let me show you, brother, in something. And I, I don't believe I could play it because I get like a copyright or something. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that in this, in this song, with, it's a song by Mystical, uh, a rapper, um, like a 90s, early 2000 type of rapper. But in the song, he shows that he goes to a, a party. He shows that he goes to a party. Uh, let me let me go to it. Let me just go to it. In this song right here by Mystical, it's called Shake Your, Shake Your Ass. All right, exactly what it's called. But in this song, in this move, in this song right now, y'all know about the song. It's a famous song amongst Jake. But in this, in this, um, in this music video. It shows him go to a party. All right. And when he goes to the party, you see him. He's on the road right there. He's going to a party like way out in the middle of nowhere. You got Pharrell there. He gets to the door. He's at the famous mansion party. Like you hear these celebrities talk about those secret parties. He goes to his party. Right. Now watch when he go inside the party. Look at the, the, the men right there. Look at the mask. Goes to show you that's one of them Illuminati type of parties. Because that's what the Illuminati's wear. You know? To hide their face. He goes to the secret party like that. And when he going through the party, I already, already jumped to it. Look who's there. Look who's in that Illuminati party. Who is that right there? That's Roy Jones Jr., a famous boxer. Goes to show you that even in the boxing world, these niggas are selling their damn soul. You know? They selling their soul. You know? It's when he walking in, too. You go check the video. He walking in, and he runs right into Roy Jones Jr. Getting pulled away by one of those women. Right there. All right? Going into one of the rooms. So I'm going to show that real fast. Uh, going to show you that, hey, man, these they, they selling their souls, too. This is um Mark... 8 and 35 it says for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the gospels the same shall save it for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul so it's not a good thing to sell your fucking soul you sell your soul you're going the only way out is basically death man let's go to the next thing we have cute here This buck cracker. This big buck cracker is very healthy, very strong, from Western Europe. I would like to start my bidding. At $1,000. I'll give you $1,500 for him. Mr. Jackson, you can't keep coming up here trying to buy my product before everybody else. Really? Yes. Well, let me ask him. I'll give you $1,600 for him. Oh, well. Seems we have ourselves an auction here. Seventeen hundred. Eighteen hundred. Eighteen fifty. Nineteen hundred. Three thousand. We. My cracker worth three thousand. Three thousand going once. Mr. Wayne. Going once. Three thousand going twice. Gather round. Gather round. Yeah, when I seen this clip, I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, but all you Edomites, how did that make you feel? You know, you self-proclaimed white people, how did that make you feel? Well, that's how exactly how you how you felt is how we felt, man. You know, it wasn't it wasn't you, you Edomites, you, you brought us over here in slavery. You did what you wanted with us. You sold us off. You broke us off from our families. You did the most to us, man. And now this that all those all that 
trauma you did is coming back in your face. Now you you, you gotta pay for that. It's, 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 you try to hide it. You try to indoctrinate us through school to forget about it. But no, now you got to pay for that. And the Lord is the one that's requiring it. It's the Lord. And now what? since you did that to us, guess what's going to happen to you? Revelation 9, 13 and 9. It says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. So now it's your turn. It's you Edomite's turn. And you're going to be getting sold and auctioned off everything. You know? Let's go to the next thing we have here. Uh. And we're all dating the same man. <laughs> We've been together six years. He slid in my DM on Facebook. <laughs> this one, a lot of... <laughs> A lot of them women that ain't right, you're going to turn. Watch the views probably go down. <laughs> if it is any. <laughs> and she slid in my room after that. <laughs> I never felt like one female could amount to everything that I wanted. Whether she can cook and clean, but she can have sex. Or she can cook, clean, have sex, but she didn't know how to be there financially. We knew nothing about Polly, and we tried it, we liked it, we started doing more research, and it just kind of went from there. We really don't have jealousy and insecurity issues. We always uplift, especially within the women, we always uplift in one another. So, like, before I, I met them, like, I was a single parent, and it was, like, real hard on me, but just meeting them and them meet my son, like, it's got ten times better. It's going to be hard to be in a poly relationship if you do have a lot of insecurities and if you're a jealous person, so you won't be able to do it because it'll break you mentally. Poly is great when it comes to household chores. One person might be cleaning the kitchen. One person might be cooking. One person might be doing the kids' hair or having the kids with homework. You, you just get a lot of help. They're benefiting and they're grasping and they're gaining a lot within just being into the relationship. <laughs> With the right people, you would never want to go back. It's going to be hard to go back to being monogamous. Why well, make my life harder when I can have Especially it? Especially with the right people. It comes in all forms and shapes and sizes. Yeah. You brothers and sisters see it, man. You know, I, I, this is an older video, I guess. I seen the, um, I seen the brother out there in Detroit do his prophecy and madness, and he showed this one. Uh, but. I mean, just think about it, you know, throw away the Western society mindset. Just throw that shit out, man. What this Edomite showed us and what, how we grew up in America, it ain't right. You notice that, you hear all the good benefits of, you know, being, um, having a sister, sisterhood, you know, that's what that is. That's sisterhood, you know, that's sisterhood. So you see the one of them had a, I guess she had a child with another man and, you know, but she came amongst them and everything is easier. They, Things are easier on each, every single last one of them. And that's exactly how it's going to go back to when we uh, get into the kingdom of heaven. We're going to go back to having multiple wives. And you, 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 the, the wives, they're all going to be a sisterhood. They're going to be, they're going to be one, we're going to be one big happy family. And we're going to have children like it ain't no tomorrow. We're going to have thousands and hundreds of children. Thousands and hundreds of children, man. You know, and you notice all his women, they're, they're pretty women. They're beautiful women. They're in shape. But y'all all, all going to be beautiful. But right about now, it's like everything is jacked up. This Edomite then jacked everything up right now. So now we, we struggle. We, we can't pay. You got single mothers out there struggling. It's it just terrible. It just everything is terrible, man. I, I, I can't stand this place, you know, but this is what it's going to go back to. Matter of fact, when you jump to the book of Judges 8. In 30, it says, in Gideon, which was a judge of Israel, it says, in Gideon had three score and ten sons of his body begotten, and he had many wives, and his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son whose name he called Abimelech. So, Gideon had three score, which is 60, and ten. A score is 20. So 3 times 20 is 60 and 10. 70 sons. You know? He has 70 sons and many wives. How do you think we're going to bring back the Israelites that die in America? 
the ones that die on this side. We're going to have to bring them back. But one woman ain't going to be able to bear all them children. You're gonna have, we're going to have to have multiple women. And we're going to take care of every single last one of y'all. We're not going to diminish anything from y'all. Y'all going to have our attention. Y'all going to have everything from us. We're going to go back to our old way. Okay? It's going to be a beautiful thing. So this ain't nothing to run from or to act weird about. All right? This is natural. But in America, this look like you look crazy as hell. All right, a lot of men is dead. A lot of men are in jail because they slept with another woman or they were dealing with another woman. A lot of men's lives is messed up because women being jealous over other women. It's just terrible. Well, everything could be so simple. <laughs> like like uh, Lauren Hill said, so simple. You know what I'm saying? But you'd rather make it home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to sing, but let's play this next thing. The election massacre took place on Election Day, November 3rd, 1874. Members of the White League, a paramilitary group supporting the Democratic Party, killed an estimated 15 to 40 black Republican voters and wounded 70 while driving away more than 1,000 unarmed black Republican voters from the polls. The election massacre took place on election day, November 3rd. Yeah, this was that history I started off talking about. We're going to go hit a little history now. Man, this is a massacre that took place in 1874 on election day, November 3rd. Why we didn't learn about this? Where a group of Edomites, like a militia today, they were back then they were called, um, uh, uh, what were they called? Para, para... I forget what that's called, man. Paramilitary. That's a militia. They basically um, overran the elections by killing off Jakes. Killing off Jakes and it was a massacre. Because I don't know, I, I got to do a little bit more studying on it, but let me read what I did pull up on Wikipedia here. It says election massacre of 1874 or coup of 1874 took place on election day november 3rd 1874 near alabama uh berber berber county freeman compri comprised a majority of the population and had been electing republican candidates to office so freed men we had a lot of jakes that was becoming freed men and what they were doing they were putting jakes in those government seats Esau wasn't liking that. It says, member of the, in the Alabama charter of the White League, a paramilitary group supporting the Democratic Party, drive to regain, uh, she said, drove to regain political power in the, the county and state. Used firearms to ambush black Republicans at the polls. So they waited for you Jakes to go vote and they armed themselves and they waited and they went and shot you up. Because you were putting Israelites in government offices. You know? Because you became freed men in the north. You notice it's Republicans because when Jake ran to the north, that was the Republicans. Jake's, you Israelite, you Negro Latino Native Americans that became freed, you started off a Republican. How did you turn into a Democrat? Think about that one. How did, how did our people all turn into a Democrat? The reason how they you you turned it to the 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 following of the Democrat Democrats is because the Democrats represent private like neighborhood love, uh, you know, owning your own stuff, taking care of your own stuff, taking care of your your fellow neighbors, and that that you know instead of how the union was or the Republicans are, which they basically give reverence to the government. So Jake's us naturally we're we're like a we 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 lean towards more of the Democrat because of how what the Democrats represent because we are people of peace we're people of doing things yourself taking care of your love your neighbors yourself and doing things of yourself so of a process of of time we we slowly moved over into the Democrats but you started off Republicans and when you were Republican they killed you off they were killing you just like. The Edomites in the South. The Edomites in the North were killing you like the Edomites in the South. 
A Edomite is an Edomite at the end of the day. You know? Now it says, member of the White League killed an estimate 15 to 40 black voters and wounded 70 while driving away more than a thousand unarmed black people at the polls and attacking the polls place in Spring Hill. The league effectively hijacked the elections. They turned all Republicans out of the office and Democrat candidate, candidates took a majority of the office up for election. So they, they hijacked it and they took the offices and killed you niggas off. And what could you do about it? Nothing. It had to happen. You know, it happened. This is, um, let's go right here to, let's go right here to, um, let's go right here to Amos 1 and 11 because it's all good. You eat them ice, you didn't have your way, you didn't have your fun with us killing the sauce, doing whatever you wanted to do, but now it's time for the Lord to get you back. So now what? Amos 1 and 11, it says, Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, like this election, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. But I will send a fire upon Teman, and shall devour the places of Basra, which is cities and cities of you Edomites, you self-proclaimed white people. The Lord going to destroy you. You, the Lord ain't going to turn away your punishment. You're going to get destroyed. You're going to get massacred. So, yeah, man, I just wanted to bring out that, that history a little bit. I was like, man, that's crazy. But, um, hey, through the spirit and power, y'all about to try There's been another current events prophecy and madness. Um, yeah, I hope your brothers and sisters is edified, there, edified out there. Hey, you stay strong. Keep doing what you do best in the Lord. Y'all about to try to thumb to all y'all. Shalom. Stay up.